Good evening, one and all. I am Sri Jayanti, clinical perfusionist, practicing for the past 40 years, almost four decades. So today, I have come here to talk about cardiopulmonary bypass. What is the importance of cardiopulmonary bypass? And being a perfusionist, what is a perfusionist role in this technology, the cardiopulmonary bypass. So, coming to cardio CPB as it is shortly called, cardiopulmonary bypass is a technique in which a machine takes over the function of the heart and the lungs during the surgery. It maintains the circulation of the blood and the patient's oxygen content during the surgery. The cardiopulmonary bypass machine is also referred to as the heart-lung machine. Now, the heart-lung machine replaces the heart-lung machine replaces the function of the heart, that is the pumping chamber, and the lungs, the oxygenation during the cardiac surgery. How does it work? It works by diverting the venous blood from the patient through an extracorporeal circulation. The name extracorporeal means the blood comes out of the patient's body into a different circulation and then gets oxygenated and goes back to the patient in the process bypassing the heart and the lungs. Hence the name heart and lung machine. Now let us look at the goals of CPB. What does cardiopulmonary bypass actually do? What is the importance of CPB? So, as already mentioned, the pump oxygenates the blood and the carbon dioxide is eliminated. Also, because of the circulation which the pump is doing, it takes care of the vital organs of the body like the kidney, brain, GI tract, etc. Also, during open heart surgery, there is a necessity to cool down the patient. It is to reduce the oxygen demand. So, this machine has the ability to cool and rewarm the patient during surgery. Also, the surgeon has to have a clear operating field. So, for the necessity of that, there are pumps in the circuit which sucks the shed blood in the surgical field and returns it back to the patient. Another important function of the heart-lung machine is to have a motionless heart. How would a surgeon work on a beating heart? And suppose the surgeon has to open the chambers of the heart, for example, to operate on an atrial septal defect or a ventricular septal defect or any congenital defects, he has to open the heart. So, what will happen in, to the blood when he opens the heart? That cannot be wasted. So, the pump sucks the blood and returns it back to the patient. Now, we know the pump maintains the systemic circulation of the body. When the surgeon is performing his surgery on the heart, how will you protect the heart? The heart also needs some a replenishment. The heart also needs some perfusion. So, for this sake, the pump has a function to supply a solution called the cardioplegic solution that arrests the heart during surgery. So, as a result, the surgeon is at ease to operate on a motionless field. Now, let us come to the evolution. How did CPB come into existence? When was it started and who found out cardiopulmonary bypass? So, when we look back to the history, in the 1940s, actually there was no facilities for medical treatment. The World Congress did not allot funds for the medical field. But Later, just before the Second World War, that is from 1940s, researchers and surgeons were very upset because there was no cardiac surgery going on. So, 
1940 once some funds were allotted for the medical field during this time it was the beginning of the cardiac surgery but there was no cardiopulmonary bypass during that time so surgeries like closure of patent ductus or a blalock toxic shunt or a coarctation of aorta which are nowadays called the closed heart surgery such surgeries were performed but later the surgeons thought there were so many patients who had cardiac ailments so they needed some sort of a machine or some gadget so that the heart could be stopped and the blood diverted from the heart to another machine or some apparatus and also they thought that there should be a safe method to anticoagulate this blood which comes out of the body and also it should be reversed another point is during the suction of the blood or into another chamber there should be minimal destruction of rbcs and also a way to oxygenate this blood and to remove carbon dioxide during the temporary phase when the heart and lungs are at rest but the real problem was to develop an oxygenator so that was running in all the researchers mind now looking back into the evolution how did these oxygenators start off and develop and come to the modern day oxygenators so trials were done with animal lungs like the dog lungs and rhesus monkey's lungs but and this was started by dr william mustard he used dog lungs and rhesus monkey lungs but it was a failure and then dr forest dodrell he used a homologous patient lung but even then he could not achieve results another scientist dr clarence dennis in 1951 he performed the first open heart surgery but with open cardiotomy technique then in 1952 john lewis used hypothermia and inflow stasis that is he thought if you we cool down the patient we could buy time to operate on patients so he rolled the patients with heavy blankets and cooled them and also the inflow stasis he avoided the blood coming into the field and he performed surgery under direct vision but surgeries had to be done very quickly because the patient started warming up so there were such hurdles in his experiments and then in 1953 which was actually the milestone in cardiac history because it was in this year dr john gibbon he invented the heart lung machine and he operated successfully on a young woman then after that he had few failures so he thought he should find a safe way to save mankind so he left his experiments and went back to do some more research 